Hi, and welcome to Deschutes Public Library's online programming. I'm Liz Goodrich, and you are here for a program tonight about Cinco de Mayo. Uh, before I introduce our speaker tonight, just a couple of things. There is a survey on our web calendar if you want to give us feedback about tonight's program. We'd love to hear from you. And also on our YouTube channel, there's all kinds of great programming that you can participate in, take part in at, at your time and, and at your convenience. So please check out Deschutes Public Library's YouTube channel. So I'd like to introduce Anna Melendez Johnson. She is an Arizona native and a former Bendite, an Arizona State University broadcast journalism graduate. She also studied theater and public communications in college. With over 20 years of experience as a public information specialist and a community theater volunteer on and off the stage, Anna is at her best when learning about or visiting historic buildings and believes everything with age has value and has a great story to tell. She currently lives in Goodyear, Arizona, and is a writer and editor for the Arizona Game and Fish Department's wildlife conservation magazine, Arizona Wildlife Views. Please welcome Anna. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody, for coming and joining us today, learning a little bit about Cinco de Mayo, celebrating Mexican identity. A lot of people are unsure as to, you know, what is this holiday all about? And we all know we have fun and games um, with drinking and uh, we usually go out with our friends. I know that I use it for a really great excuse to go have a margarita. So um, I'm right there with you. But there are some really important reasons why Cinco de Mayo even happened or was recognized. We know that we celebrate it on May 5th internationally. We celebrate all things about the Mexican culture during Cinco de Mayo. But the reason for the holiday, Cinco de Mayo is the celebration of the Mexican army's unique victory over the French empire at the Battle of Puebla, May 5th, 1862. So I say unique victory, and you'll understand why uh, a little bit later, but it was um, a very inspirational event to the people of Mexico. Although short-lived, the battle outcome became a symbolic victory. Now, um, Mexican leadership played a key role as to why um, Cinco de Mayo ever happened and why the battle at Puebla was won by the Mexican army. So Commander General Ignacio Zaragoza Seguen was the Mexican leader at that time. He ruled, um, he, he guided the army at that time. He was a Mexican general and a politician. He was an experienced general with no formal military training. And he was born in what we know now as Texas. So let me tell you a little bit more about this general. Uh, General Zaragoza, he was born in Bahia del Espiritu Santo, and it's now known as Goliad, Texas in the United States. So he was born in 1829, and he died in 1862, September of 1862, only four months after the victory at Puebla. He died at only 33 years old of the typhoid, typhoid fever. So although that's a really sad ending, he inspired the Mexican people to no end. And I'll tell you more about that as we go. His career began in 1853. He was a secretary of war and Navy in Mexico from April 61, 1861 to December of 1861. So not a very long time in that position, but um, he, his army would never have a commander equal to him as they suffered defeat later on, uh, including against the French. So this Battle of Puebla was, was against the French army. And we'll learn a lot more about the French army at that time, but they will have never had another commander like him ever again, because later they do suffer defeat from the French. He was buried in Mexico City where a monument was later created there um, for him because they moved his body later to Puebla, because Puebla was such a significant uh, event. That battle was such a significant event in Puebla. And uh, they wanted to signify that by moving his body there. So a monument was erected in Mexico City. Now, uh, most Mexican states have at least one rural locality 
named after Zaragoza. And uh, at, as of this year, there's 52 uh, rural localities named after him. He was really, really a legend there. There are Mexican highways, municipalities, urban localities, and street names named after Zaragoza. At the time of the Battle of Puebla, the Mexican leadership also included Presidente Benito Juarez. He was born in Oaxaca in 1806. He came from very humble beginnings and he was orphaned at age three. He served the public in a variety of positions and he married his wife who was 20 years younger. I think that was kind of a thing back then because um, my grandpa married my grandma. She was much younger than he was. So I think um, that was that was a thing back then. He died in 1872 at age 66. Now, um, Presidente Juarez, um, his parents were peasants and he became a lawyer and a judge later on. He was the president of the Mexico, Mexican Supreme Court, and before that, Secretary of the Interior, Governor of Oaxaca, and Secretary of Public Education. This guy came from nothing, and he became the president of Mexico, which is, uh, says a lot to his character and a lot to his leadership. So what caused the battle at Puebla? Mexico was broke after the reform war. They won that war, but they were broke. This, the state, uh, the country was broke after that reform war. It was held 1858 to 1860, that's when it happened. And in 1861, Presidente Juarez made a serious announcement. So he was, a fo he was forced to announce he would suspend foreign debtor interest payments for two years. So that was a big deal. Um, the French, Spanish, and the United Kingdom diplomats joined forces to invade Mexico. Their goal was to pr pressure Juarez to negotiate payments of debt. So in late 1861, in retaliation, they created that alliance. And in 1862, France had other ideas. What happened is the alliance disbanded in the spring of 1862, when the British and Spain negotiated with Mexico. France's true intentions were apparent when they proceeded to invade Mexico anyway. The French intentions or their goal was to set up a puppet government in Mexico. And uh, that way they'd be guaranteed to re re pay themselves back, so to speak. Um, other intentions, I, I could not find, but for sure, that was definitely a reason why they wanted to invade. The French army was highly skilled and equipped. There were 5,000 men compared to the Mexican troops. There were only 4,000 there. The Mexican army, they were ragtag patriots. They won the reform war, but they were skilled in conventional and guerrilla warfare. And again, they only had 4,000 troops. So more about the Battle of Puebla. Let me, what's going here? The Battle of Puebla occurred against a highly skilled French army, as I mentioned, considering they were considered the greatest army in the world at that time. They were expected to win the Battle of Puebla. They outnumbered Mexican troops by a thousand and had not been defeated in almost 50 years. But you've got these ragtag, this Mexican army winning the Battle of Puebla. So what was great about it, especially, is the French were delayed in reaching Mexico City, which, is, which was the heart of the country. Now later, Fran France did come back a year later and they um, came back with additional troops uh, defeating Mexico. This is later, but let's stay in the moment. We have a victory and for um, the Mexican people, this was incredibly inspirational because they didn't expect to win and they had less troops and they weren't as skilled or as well equipped and they won. So um, this is part of why this battle was so inspirational. The significance to the Mexican people, the victory over the great French army was an incredible sign of strength and power. It bolstered the Mexican people's confidence, identity, and later on uh, eventually their heritage. 
The win launched General Zaragoza as a legend in Mexican history. He was one of the few Mexican generals to ever succeed over the French in battle. The victory fueled the Mexican resistance movement and later El Movimiento, which is um, another word for that is the Chicano movement. So we'll talk about that. The Battle of Pueblo inspired Mexican pride and gave hope to a future Chicano movement, also called or known as El Movimiento, which is the movement in Spanish. In the 1940s, the Chicano movement began and um, it inspired pride of culture. They decided no longer to try to blend in as white. They embraced their heritage instead. And in the 50s and 60s, Cinco de Mayo became popular and widespread in the United States, first in the larger populated um, cities of Los Angeles, Chicago, Houston, and New York. The celebration involved, evolved into a celebration of Mexican culture and heritage. In the 1980s, marketers got really smart and beer companies promoted Cinco de Mayo for profit making during the holiday. And even more, it became a widespread holiday across the United States. So a little bit more about the Chicano movement. In 1848, the Mexican-American War occurred and um, Mexico, um, large parts of Mexico became U.S. soil. So in the 1960s, the movement began. La Raza, or the people, chose to be proud of their culture and ethnicity. Prior, they had tried to kind of just mesh in with everybody and be more Anglo, be more um, into that culture. And um, what happened with El Movimiento, the Chicano movement, it advocated social and political empowerment through cultural nat nationalism. People just wanted to be proud of who they were. So what actually happened is after the war, the Mexicans who stayed on Mexican land now American soil were promised citizenship and the right to prosperity, language, and culture. But the promises were never kept, leaving many Hispanics impoverished. So they decided not to blend in, blend in anymore, and they embraced their heritage instead. Now, the city of Pueblo today is a thriving city. It's interesting because the, the city of Puebla occurs in the state of Puebla, the state of the same name. So it was founded in 1531. It's the largest city in Puebla state, and the economy is based um, in industry mostly. So they have the largest VW factory there, and they have an Audi factory as well. So the city really thrives on industry. The richest Catholic diocese exists there and students come all around the country to stay and study there. There's over six universities for students to study at. And it's a colonial era planned city. Puebla is located in Southern central Mexico between the capital of Mexico City and Veracruz, Mexico's primary Atlantic port. It's famous for mole poblano and chilies in nagado, nagada, excuse me. So poblano chilies stuffed with picadillo and um, that is shredded meat with fruits and spices. So I don't know if any of you ordered that at a restaurant before, but chili poblano with mole sauce. It's dinner time for me right now. Oh my gosh, that sounds so amazing. So um, they're famous for that dish. So at Cinco de Mayo, of course, they celebrate with that dish because that's what they're known for. Artistically, their artists there are known for a high quality, original pottery. And it's called Talavera pottery. And if you've seen knockoffs of it in a lot of the import stores, um, it's brightly colored and it's really gorgeous stuff. Um, how you can tell the difference between the high quality original Talavera pottery is that the artwork and the colors are raised up off of the ceramic and the finish is super glossy and shiny. 
and super cool, super colorful. Um, so there's detailed patterns and you can find many imitations in the import stores. Now the celebration in Mexico of Cinco de Mayo, this tells you a little bit more about that. So on May 9th in 1962, Juarez declared the holiday El Día de la Batalla de Puebla, the day of the Battle of Puebla. Historic costume reenactments take place. So we've got actors pretending like they're the Mexican soldiers and we've got Mexican actors pretending like they're the French soldiers and they reenact the battle at Puebla. There are parades and street parties. There's commemorations, music, dance, and of course, a lot of mole poblano. Primarily Cinco de Mayo is uh, celebrated in Puebla, but also in a few other Mexican cities. So in Mexico, you're not going to see it being a widespread thing, which is I thought was really interesting, but mostly in Puebla. It's not a federal holiday. Most businesses stay open. I found out that specifically Veracruz does shut down, but I do not know the reason for that. So that's all very interesting. So you may have thought that Cinco de Mayo is the Mexican independence holiday, but that is not true. Perhaps you have heard of the Fiestas Patrias, the patriotic festivals, what that translates to, that's held for three days in the fall. So that is the Mexican independence festival, Fiesta Patrias specifically. Now, celebrating in the United States, we started celebrating here in California in 1863 and each year since then. So um, it's evolved into a landmark celebration of Mexican culture and heritage, also celebrated internationally. But the United States is known to make the most of this Mexican holiday. And you'll find that we celebrate it the biggest here than in many other countries. We celebrate with street parties and parades, food, drink, and music. Now, before COVID, the um, Los Angeles Fiesta Broadway is the largest celebration in the world with up to 500,000 people um, attending in the 90s. Uh, in recent years, last five to 10 years, those numbers have been dropping even before COVID. So that's it. That's my presentation about Cinco de Mayo and I hope you have a very good one. Stay safe and have a great time. Um, thank you, Anna. You want to stop uh, sharing your screen? I just maybe have a couple of questions. So <clears throat> when we were organizing this program and I was talking to somebody about, you know, what we were doing and uh, I was, I was woefully um, uninformed because I too thought that Cinco de Mayo was the Mexican Independence Day. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really thankful and wondering about um, the importance of these kinds of programs for 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 you and and helping people understand the importance of and understanding more thoroughly what why these events happen. So I think that um, I learned a lot during my research as well. So I didn't grow up traditionally in a traditional Hispanic home, and we did celebrate, but I really didn't know the reason as to you know why are we celebrating Cinco de Mayo. So um, through the years, I picked up a little bit more, a little bit more information. Um, the Mexican ind independence holiday of Fiestas Patrias, I did participate in when I was in um, college. So I think it's really great that this program exists because I've even learned things by, by presenting and doing, doing research here. So I think that's really important. And then the rest of us can share with others and share this link. Um, whatever it should be. So I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, I think um, just understanding the obstacles um, that Cinco de Mayo, you know, that they represent the struggle against the French and the winning of this battle that's, that brought pride and um, success to the Mexican people, just understanding that is, is really going to make me look at Cinco de Mayo differently. Um, so I want to thank you for joining us here and sharing your information and your, your culture. And we really appreciate you. Thank you so much for letting me do so. And hi to all my Central Oregon friends. <laughs> <laughs>